In 3D printing, there's a program called a slicer that creates a file that's actually printable. In this one, we're going to go over what a slicer is and some of the settings that are inside the slicer and what they do. A slicer is a piece of software that most commonly takes an STL file and divides it up line by line, generating a set of code that your 3D printer can then interpret to create your model. There's a lot of different slicers available out there, Click 3R, Cura, and Simplify 3D being three more common ones. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using Slick 3R because that's what I'm most comfortable with. The settings in Cura and Simplify 3D and a lot of the other slicers are going to be very similar. Note, Slick 3R and Cura are available for free, while Simplify 3D does require a paid-for license. This is one of the most recent Slick 3R versions, the Prusa edition. This is the first screen you'll see when you launch Slick 3R. This is the 3D view of the model that you import. To import a model, you just go to Add, select your STL file, and hit Open. For this, we're going to scale this model up to 250. From this view, you can add additional models with the plus sign. You can arrange them with the Arrange button. You can decrease the number of models with the negative. You can rotate the models. You can scale the models to whichever size you'd like. If you had an STL file that contained more than one body, you could split those bodies out separately using the split command. You can also cut your model. With the cut command, you can split your model at whatever Z height you wish, either keeping the upper and lower parts or either one. In settings and layer editing, you can do more advanced commands like modifying the model or editing the layer height one layer at a time. We won't go over that in this tutorial. Now we'll look at the three different sections, print setting, filament setting, and printer setting. These are all the default print settings that Prusa provides for you out of the box. These won't work for every printer, but they're a great place to start. Let's start at a common print setting of a 0.2 millimeter layer height. Layers and Perimeters Layer height is the resolution setting. This is how high each layer will be. The larger the number, the more coarse the layer setting. You can also alter the first layer height if you'd like a little taller first layer to help adhesion. A good rule is to never use a layer height that's more than 75% of your nozzle diameter. So if you have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, you should never go over 0.3 millimeter layer height. Perimeters. This is how many outer perimeters will be in the model. The more outer perimeters, usually the sturdier the model is going to be. The default for this setting is 2. You can see from the slicer preview, there are two outer perimeters. Horizontal shells. This will be how many solid shells there are on the top and the bottom layers of the model, the layers before you get to the infill. You can see on the top of this model, you have to go down five layers before you reach the infill. Same on the bottom four layers before you get to the infill. Again, settings can be adjusted to create a stronger model if you need to. You can also adjust the seam position. This is the point where the printer will go to the next layer. There's a lot of different settings here if you'd like to align the seam or have it go to the nearest if you want to go faster or random if you don't want the seam lined up at all. Then we go to infill. Again, infill is a setting on how rigid or dense you want the model to be. A fair setting for most parts is 20%. There's lots of different types of fill patterns and top and bottom fill patterns. Rectilinear is going to be the most consistent for top and bottom layers. Cubic is a very sturdy infill pattern, but doesn't print the fastest. Rectilinear is a little faster and almost as strong. This is what rectilinear infill looks like. This is what cubic infill looks like. Again, there's a lot of different types of infill, so play around with it. Skirt and brim. The skirt is the layer that the printer lays around the model to prime the nozzle before it gets started on printing. This band around the model is the skirt. This is what a brim looks like. If you had a really tricky part and it kept curling on you, you could add a brim to help with adhesion. Support material. Support material is what helps you when printing things in midair. The overhang threshold is what tells the slicer how severe the angle has to be before it will support it. 45 is about the maximum on a 3D printer. 
A raft are layers that get laid down on the print bed before the model starts to help support it. These are useful on unheated beds or you have a model that won't lay perfectly flat on the build surface. This is what a raft looks like. You can just peel the raft off after the print's done. There are a lot of different options when it comes to adjusting support material, but one of the more important ones, I think, is support on build plate only. If you don't tick this box, it's going to support any open area. For example, that box wasn't ticked and it supported the center of this zero. If the box is ticked, it will only support things that are in direct line with the build surface. It won't try to fill gaps inside the model. After your print is done, you can usually just peel away the support material. And you'll be left with your clean model. Then we have speed. Speed is always a tricky subject. Bruce's defaults are very solid values to start with. They're not very fast, but you get very consistent prints. Infill will always print a little faster than the other parts of the model because you can't see those layers. Bridges will print a little slower to allow the filament to cool down. External perimeters will also print a little slower so they have a better chance of looking a lot nicer. Usually the slower you go, the better your print quality is going to be. There are also a lot of other advanced controls that you can play around with for print speed. We will skip multiple extruders and go to advanced. Extrusion width can also be a trickier setting. Basically what we're saying here is how much do you want to extrude to satisfy that layer height? Basically this would improve layer accuracy because less filament would be extruded. Fatter extrusion widths would therefore increase resolution. But on things like infill, if you want to use fatter extrusion widths, it might make your model stronger because there would be more plastic. Infill and perimeter overlap. When doing infill, this is the percentage of the infill that will actually fall into the perimeter layer. In this model, that would be this area. The infill is going to go 25% into that perimeter layer. This helps with connecting the infill and making the model strong. It also helps with the faster infill speeds to ensure the infill sticks to the side of the model. Bridge flow rates. When bridging or spanning a gap that has no model underneath it, this can help by reducing the amount of filament so the filament isn't as heavy and won't sag. In output options, I find it useful to change the output file name format. You can add a date or a timestamp on each one of the files so you know when the G code was created. Then we go to the filament settings tab. Again, the Prusa defaults are pretty good, but you can adjust it for whatever filament you're using. We'll go over the PLA settings. Here you set the diameter of the filament, most commonly 1.75 millimeter. The extrusion multiplier can be adjusted if you're over extruding or under extruding. This is in lieu of adjusting the E-steps of your extruder when tuning your filament. Then in the temperatures, you can set the temperature of the extruder and the bed for printing. You can adjust the first layer different from the other layers if you need a little extra adhesion on the bed. And then we have cooling. This is to control your part cooling fan. Most slicers have an automatic cooling feature. Here you can tell what the minimum fan speed will be and what the maximum fan speed will be. Not every filament will use a part cooling fan. For example, if you're using ABS, these settings will be turned off. Custom filament G-code can be useful because you can set it on a per filament basis if you need to increase E-steps for extrusion rate, for example. Then we jump over to printer settings. For the general settings, you can set the bed shape. This is where you set the bed size and its shape if you've got a circle or a rectangular bed. You can also adjust the origin. This is the origin of where the hot end will be when the print starts. This can be adjusted, for example, if your printer's not printing in the center of the bed. The Z offset can also be adjusted here. For example, if you're using a bed probe and you need to come up or down a fine increment, you can add it here instead of going back to your printer and adjusting it. You can also set up Octoprint here. Put your IP address and your API key and you can send models directly to Octoprint. You can adjust your G-code flavor, usually Marlin, and a few other advanced settings that are usually left to default. You can also use custom G-code at the printer level. This is where you put in your G29 for your auto bed leveling or your G28 to home your printer before the printer starts. This is also what sets the layer temperature so that you don't start printing before the extruder is at the correct temp. 
Same with the NG code. This is what turns the printer off and turns the fan off when the print has completed. Click 3 r offers many levels of custom G code. Before layers, after layers, and even on tool change. And then extruder settings. This is where you set your nozzle diameter, layer height limits, what are the maximum and minimum layer heights that I can print, and retraction settings. This is the length and the speed that the filament will be pulled back in to prevent ooze when it's moving over the model. A length of around one with a 35 millimeter speed is a good setting for a direct drive extruder, while a Bowden style extruder might be set to a length of two millimeters with a 40 millimeter speed. Z lift is also a nice feature. This will lift the Z axis a certain height while it's moving over the model. This helps with stringing and also helps with oozing. There are many other settings you can use to help dial in retraction, such as if you want to retract on a layer change or you want to wipe while retracting, moving into the center of the model. So when you're done fine tuning all your settings and you're ready to print your model, you just hit slice now and then export G code. This will create a G code file that's ready to go on your printer for printing. I know that was a lot of info and a lot of screen share, and we just glossed over high level a lot of those settings. If you have a question about a specific setting, please leave it in the comments below. I hope you liked this video and it was helpful. If so, leave it a thumbs up or consider subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts below. And as always, thanks for watching.